Hi everyone, I am Xing Yi. I will present my paper, Achieving Full Parallelism in LSTM via a unified accelerator design. This design talks on LSTM accelerator on FPGA device. Here are a few things about myself. I'm a PhD student at the University of Pittsburgh. My advisor is Professor Jin Tong Hu. My research interests include machine learning algorithm and resource constraint device machine learning algorithm, auto-deployment, and IPGA, New York architecture search, and resource constraint device. My present will be in three sections. The background of LSTM, the unified accelerator design, and its analytical model. The experiment result. I will introduce the LSTM background first. The full name of LSTM is long short-term memory which is good at processing sequential data. It recurrently uses a single LSM cell to process data at different timestamps. The input data at each timestamp is a vector, which will be extracted by the cell. The extracted data will be kept and applied on the next input. For more complicated complica applications, we can stack LSM cell to form stacked layer LSTM or even bidirectional LSTM. These stacked cells share the same architecture, but not sharing the weight. Inside a LSTM cell, it uses gate to extract input data. The input gate, the forget gate, the output gate, and the cell state gate. The four gate results will be further processed to infer the cell output. We can see that the four gates have the same kind of computations. And in a cell, we can summarize five computing patterns. They are the first one, multiply accumulate for input vector in length D, which is a data embedding size. Pattern two, multiply accumulate for prior output in length edge, which is the cell size. And both pattern one and two share the same number of matrix rows. The pattern three, element-wise vector addition in length edge. Pattern four, element-wise vector multiplication in length edge. And pattern five, activations such as sigmoid and ten. Among the five computing patterns, pattern one and two are mostly computing intensive. Activation in pattern 5 are usually approximately computed. Here, the computing patterns are further labeled in the LSTM data flow. In each gate, the result of computing pattern 1 and 2 will be further computed in pattern 3. After activation, gate results will be further processed in pattern 3 and 4 to get the same output. We can see that computing burden at each stage is different. The majority of the computing burden is in pattern one and two. The existing accelerators on FPGA design a unique computing kernel for each computing pattern. For example, the two dedicated multiply accumulate kernel for pattern one and two, we call it MAC. Dedicated element-wise operation kernel for pattern three and four. Such design suffers from several problems. One, the kernel synchronization, for example, synchronizing the MAC kernels. Two, unbalanced kernel pipeline, such as the pipeline between MAC kernels and the element-wise kernel. Three, low working frequency due to multiple dedicated kernels. Four, low device resource utilization due to the unbalanced kernel size. Next, I will introduce my design, the Unified LSTM Accelerator and its analytical model. If we dig into a gate, we can find that the two Macs can be converted to element-wise operation like pattern three and four. The original pattern one needs D multipliers with an adder tree, and pattern two needs H multipliers with an adder tree. Each row of the weight is multiplied with the vector and get accumulated. However, the weight matrix which are represented by the two blue blocks have the same number of rows, edge. 
here let's keep in mind that computing patterns three and four they are in element wise operation of size edge as well we can do the original mac in the same element wise fashion first each element of the vector multiplies its corresponding weight column second to iterate all the vector elements and its corresponding weight columns third we accumulate the products of vector element and weight element in the same row therefore the two max can be processed via pattern three and four as well and pattern one and two have the same matrix rows so the conversion for pattern one and two are in the same computing size but in different iterations now we can use only pattern three and four a pair of element wise vector multiplication and addition to process the entire LSTM gate. During computing, patterns three and four can be processed in two-stage pipeline. For example, the weight column one element-wise product can be accumulated while computing column two's element-wise product. With such a conversion, all computations in a gate can be processed via unified patterns In this way, we can eliminate computing pattern one and two, achieving the parallelism in each LSTM gate. The computing patterns are unified in patterns three and four of the same size. This brings chances in building unified computing kernel. Then we can recursively call the same kernel to process the entire LSTM. In this way, we can get rid of kernel synchronization and the unbalanced pipeline between computing kernels. With the unified computing patterns in one gate, the cross-gate parallelism can also be achieved by stacking the weight matrix of the four gates, which can increase the parallelism by a factor of four. This is because the input vector is shared by the four gates, and the gate weight matrix are independent of each other. Such flexible parallelism can be taken advantage by devices such as FPGAs. A highly parallel computing core can easily fully utilize the device resource, and it is also friendly for unchip data flow arrangement. Considering the device resources, the maximum size of the proposed computing kernel is four times of edge, and the device can have multiple such computing kernel if the buffer is supported. We also build an analytical model to mitigate the gap between the accelerator design and the hardware features, such as DSPs, the block RAMs, and FPGA. With the given FPGA and LSTM, the analytical model can determine first the computing kernel key parameters, such as kernel size, the number of kernels, and the portion of weight that can be buffered on the chip. Number two, device buffer management, such as the unit buffer size, APG physical buffer size, and LSTM weight footprint size. Number three, the running schedule of the accelerator. In section three, I will introduce my experiment result. The experiment is performed on two APGAs, a small LSTM on pink Z1, and the big LSTM on VC707. We got the runtime data on pink Z1 and applied analytical model on VC707. On pink Z1, we outperformed the reference design with 10 times less inference time in int 16 data type, while the reference design does not support floating point data type. Our design can also fully utilize the pink Z1's DSP and block RAM resource to buffer all the weights on the chip. For VC707, our inference time is 40% less than the reference designs. And we can also fully utilize the device resource to buffer all the weights on the chip. And this is all for my today's presentation. Thanks for watching.